Okay, hi everyone. Uh, this screencast is on the properties of alkanes and alkenes. So what do they do? How do they behave? Um, now let's firstly just have a little think about um, polarity. It's been a little while since we've thought about that. But in fact, um, hydrocarbons are very distinctive in their polarities. Um, and just to go back, we didn't actually ever write this down, but we talked about it. We are talking about ionic bonds way back. Um, we said if the, if the two elements that were making up that ionic, or that were coming together, were, had differed in their electronegativities by more than 1.67, that's a big difference, um, that's enough to pull electron away, basically from the metal to the, to the non-metal, and ending up with ions, and you end up with this ionic bond, association of, two, of a cation and an anion. Now, if it's not as extreme as that, if it has not quite as a greater difference, um, and it's less than um, 1.67, but not not but more than 0.4 difference, um, there's still enough pull in the bond. They'll share, but um, it's it's a polar. It's like it's you know it's unfair sharing. So it's not quite as much as ripping it off, but it's a, there's a real um, uh, bias towards one side of the molecules having that. Um, electron pair more of the time. So we call that that sort of difference a polar covalent. And if um, the difference in a, in a covalent molecule sharing is less than 0.4, we say that uh, it's a non-polar. Um, okay, so and that's basically you know, not a very significant difference. Now what about carbon and hydrogen, which is what basically what hydrocarbons are? Um, uh, carbon has an electronegativity of 2.5 Hydrogen has electronegativity of 2.1. You see this on your periodic tables. Just check those numbers. And so what's the difference? Uh, only 0.4. So we would define hydrocarbons, basic hydrocarbon bond of carbon and hydrogen, as being a covalent bond but not, not polar. There's not a big enough difference. Okay, just to clarify that. And that's quite a handy set of numbers. We won't actually test you on these numbers, but it just sometimes makes it clear how what kind of bond and what, what the degree of sharing it is. Yeah. Um, um, a little, uh, a lot of sharing and not much sharing or, or, or no sharing at all, basically, as we go up that scale. Okay, so as I said, therefore, um, simple hydrocarbons um, are non-polar. And so what that means is there are no dipoles, okay, formed, and therefore the main intermolecular force that they have um, uh, are dispersion forces. So between the molecules, between different molecules that are just the hydrocarbons, they're only held together by the by the weakest of the intermolecular. I mean, all every molecule atom has these dispersion forces, but sometimes they have strong ones as well. But not not hydrocarbons. Okay, so just that will help explain quite a lot of the properties. Um, so the, the properties that hydrocarbons have are um, that as they get longer, what happens? Their boiling point increases. And why would that be? Well, that's because the longer they are, the more electrons they have floating around them, um, uh, the, the more chance they have of these instantaneous dipoles, these dispersion forces holding them together. Um, the longer hydrocarbons get, the more their viscosity increases. You know, viscosity meaning thickness or stickiness, for example, like oil. Okay, if you think about the difference between petrol, it's really quite thin. Oil is actually really quite thick. How do we explain that? Ditto. Same as above. More dispersion forces holding them together. Um, as hydrocarbons get longer, <coughs> their volatility, flammability, decreases. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, what's that saying? That's saying that uh, their ability to evaporate and be flammable actually decreases. So, in other words, so it's, um, and what, why does that happen? Um, ditto. Okay, <laughs> more dispersion. So, so the opposite of that means things that are really short, hydrocarbons that are short, um, um, have all the opposite. Okay, short hydrocarbons actually um, boil at quite at lower temperatures. They're fairly thin, you know, quite liquid and, and um, thin, and they're they're more volatile, more flammable. So you tend to think, you know, let's move away from oil and think about petrol, you know, and think about, um, um, or think about methane, you know, uh, that's one of the shortest 
the shortest alkane, and that's a gas. You know, it's so it's so volatile. It's a gas at room temperature, um, and a great, you know, a great source of energy. We burn that um, for 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 energy. So it's it's very flammable. So that's the opposite. Okay, so that that explains uh, dispersion forces. Explain the properties, and it also um, just is worth paying thinking about. Well, this is this is actually taken advantage of in. Um, in fractional distillation, okay, so um, when we heat, we put crude oil in, which is a mixture of all the um, alkanes, and we heat it, and you know, it takes it doesn't take a lot of energy to get the gas to evaporate, or in, if if any energy, okay, um, less than thirty degrees. But we have to, it takes a, f and that just bubbles off the top, and there's a lot of little caps and little tricks inside this container, little valves that only let things through one way, whatever. Um, but basically they can separate based on temperature, and as things evaporate more, they re go further up these, um, the tower. Okay, so um, but if you get um, residue or the crude oil, you know, getting up to 200 degrees, you start getting, uh, this is gasoline petrol, you know, one of the, one of the easy to evaporate shorter chain alkanes, okay. Octane, you know, high octane petrol. That's it's got eight, eight um, carbons. Methane, one carbon. Okay, so the difference in length. Kerosene jet fuel, longer again, and it takes more energy. Okay, to get it up to here. Now we're getting into the oils because these are getting long, and we've got diesel fuel, we've got lubricating oil, and then we've got stuff that even if you heat it, it doesn't evaporate. It's not going to move up, and that's that's the residue at the bottom, which we actually put on the road. Okay. <laughs> Tar, asphalt, whatever you use it to seal ship decks and all that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, and they're just spelled out. And here we are. This is interesting. So it tells us a bit about the na the number of carbon. So methane is one, but there's also ethane, um, butane, and propane. Okay, they all come off in the mixture in natural gas. Uh, and then bigger things, you know, from the um, pentanes, um, the uh, octanes, uh, and beyond. Um, <coughs> gasoline mixture of larger. Okay, so the actual the numbers actually correspond beautifully to, you know, how how volatile our temperatures it takes to evaporate them, and that's how we separate them at refineries. Now let's have a think about the kind of reactions. Alkanes are, are mainly uh, used for uh, combustion. You burn them. Okay, they're really good at that. Um, alkenes, and we'll talk about this uh, in a little bit. Um, um, you know, there's also energy in them, but they also have the, and you can also, you could combust them, and there's no reason why you can't, but they, in addition to combustion, undergo these things called addition reactions, that's what we'll talk about. But let's just go back to alkanes, and here's a little memory jogger. Can you write a balanced equation for propane plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide and water? Okay, you might want to pause this and see if you can just write out um, the, the chemical formulas of each of those components. And... We'll have a look if you were right. Okay, so propane, C3H8, oxygen O2. Okay, now can you balance it? So pause it again, have a go at balancing. And here we are. Did you get five oxygens? Did you get three carbons? And did you get four waters? Well done. Okay, so we'll, we'll use those. Um, you know, you'll need to be able to just remember how to balance equations. Um, so that's that's combustion. Now what about addition? This is what I said happens with with uh, the alkenes. Okay, The alkene means it has a double bond. This can break and combine with other reactants. Okay, So let's have a look at an example. This is straight out of your books here. Um, so if you add um, bromine, okay, Br2, it's also a, a covalent molecule, uh, to, an, to an alkene, there's a double bond, the double one actually breaks and reforms uh, to incorporate each of the uh, bromine atoms. Okay, and now interestingly, um, bromine by itself is actually um, at room temperature is a dark liquid. Okay, but when it actually gets split like this, it loses its colour. Okay, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, we're going to have a little look at a, at a, a YouTube clip um, on that, and hopefully you'll see uh, what's going on. The tube on the left contains the saturated hydrocarbon cyclohexane. The tube on the right contains the unsaturated hydrocarbon cyclohexene. First, 
brown-red bromine is added drop by drop to the left-hand tube containing saturated hydrocarbon. As the bromine is added, it dissolves in the cyclohexane. The color remains when the solution is stirred because bromine does not react with saturated hydrocarbon. Now, liquid bromine is added to the unsaturated hydrocarbon, cyclohexene. The red-brown color disappears as the bromine mixes with the cyclohexene. This is because the bromine reacts with cyclohexene, adding to the double bond. Okay, we'll come back uh, to where to our story. Where are we? Oops, there we go. Oh, no, I'm not getting out of this. Hang on, where am I stuck? Okay, we're back. Um, so yeah, so that's a really a nice demonstration. When she talks about saturated, she's she's actually um, referring to uh, the um, uh, alkane. Okay, well, that's a, that's a saturated. It's got the most number of of hydrogens. And when she talks about an unsaturated, she's actually ref referring to the fact that there's there's some sort of double bond. Okay, so bromine is used to detect double bonds. If they're present, uh, it loses its color. All right. Now what's another, what's another? There are actually four four kinds of reactions that um, that are that involve double bonds. Okay, so the second one, is something called hydrogenation. Okay, you take hydrogen this time, not bromine, but another um, another uh, molecule, and if you add it to uh, a double bond, it does the same thing as bromine. Okay. Uh, so addition of hydrogen to ethene in the presence of a catalyst. Okay, so that will happen. And hydrogenation. Sometimes you, you read about hydrogenated oils. Okay, and what they what they do is they um uh, they take oils in say in, for making margarine or whatever that have um, that have a double bond in it. We say they're unsaturated, and they get hydrogenated. They get the hydrogens broken or the double bond broken, I should say, uh, to become um, saturated fats okay um, so this is just a word you might hear and it actually means um, it's the same as we use it in this in this sense okay um, another example a third example is hydrolysis okay hydrogenation the addition of hydrogen hydrolysis actually lysis as in breaking up hydro is in water breaking up water so you take water and you add it to a double bond with a catalyst at high temperature, okay, steam actually, uh, so the water's turned to steam, and that gives enough energy, and again, the double bond is broken, and you get a hydrogen atom, and then the other part of the water, the OH, okay, and that's called hydrolysis, the breaking up of water with a double bond. And and that's an important, uh, uh, that's a reaction that you can undergoes. Okay, and finally, um, polymerization. Okay, and this is when you get individual what we call um, monomers or single units okay of um, something with a double bond so this what's this called it's got two uh, it's got two carbons so it's F and it's got a double bond ene ethene ethene add them together with a catalyst the double bonds break and what happens is they just form single bonds with the next carbon okay so now we've got a big long chain going off it so it's ethene and monomers a whole lot of them, we call it polyethene. Okay, it's called polymerization, and this keeps going. It doesn't just stop; it goes on and on and on. You just get enough of this together, um, and polyethene. That's polymerization, and we're going to talk a bit about that uh, in uh, in a sack that's coming up. So good luck. <laughs> All right. So um, uh, that's the end of this uh, um, screencast.